Now we've got our skirts completed and it's time to fit the bodice over. And the reason I did it in that order was because we do have to fit the bodice over the waistbands of the two skirts, plus over your underwear that has got to be on before we start. So let's see what's in our bodice kit. This is more pieces than some of the others. So first, you've got your mother of pearl buttons. You've got your four for your skirt tabs that are the four hole. And then you've got your five that are gonna go down your bodice in the front. Um, these are becoming more and more difficult to obtain with any good quality. So feel lucky that you have these for your kits. And don't open it until you need it. <laughs> ready to sew them because on. Because when you lose them or the cat swallows them. <laughs> You're in trouble. Okay, then we have... And they've all been counted twice. Exactly. So and, and packaged by my husband. Yes. So, and um, he's a doctor, so he was not going to make a mistake. No, he wasn't. All right, the next piece we have is the bodice uh, neck binding, which is going to be in our bias stripe. So you have a very cute detail around the neck. Then you have a bias that's going to bind the bottom of the bodice. You'll see when we put it together. It's a very common technique to see this where um, you've got a binding that's coming up um, and catching all your raw edges. Then of course we have our file that our pieces are gonna be cut from. We have the Batiste lining because we're going to flat line this to give this bodice a little more stability. Um, and I will demonstrate how to do that. Then on the back, you have the ruffle pieces. So you're going to have cuff ruffles and you're going to have, um, oh, these are the ruffles for the back of those streamers we saw in the picture. And these are the ruffles for the cuffs. The streamers that go down the back the, of the skirt. Down the back and attached to your, to your belt. So that's what's in this kit. We're going to put everything away now except for the pieces we need to cut out. Now, of course, these pieces will important. need to be cut. It's um, very important to keep your pieces put away. Put yes, up. and I've provided you bags to help your organization. And if, and if you're good about putting your pieces back in your bags and your label in there that says that this is your bodice kit, then it's a lot easier to keep track of things because the pieces all get jumbled up and then you're going, is this the piece for the bodice? Or was this a piece for a tab or what? So anyway. It's all Cheryl, how many separate? You. Do you know how many separate pieces are in this kit? No, I've never counted. No. A lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah, they always <laughs> and have. a lot of bias. That's yeah, yeah. that's the time-consuming part for me to do is all those biases. So let's get out our fabric and you should press it. It's going to have it's going to have lines in it, but. Um, see how this lays out. So we have a bodice front, which is a cut two, so we can lay that there. We have a bodice back, which is a cut one. We have sleeves that are going to be a cut two, so we'll lay those there. And I'm going to, because it doesn't matter if this is up or down on some fabrics, it's very critical. On this one, it's not. You've got that. You've got your bodice inset on your side back. That is going to be a cut two. You only need one of these. And so then we have spots for, which I don't have out yet, your belts and your streamers are gonna come out of this. And I'm gonna run this with the white lines. When you think about putting the belt up, the lines are gonna go around for the belt on your bodice, it's gonna go down, and your streamers, the lines are gonna go down. So it's critical that we are careful with, with this fabric. Yes, exactly. Okay, then if you look here, we've got cut to file, cut to by, by a Batiste, and all of these pieces. So all of these pieces are flat lined when they're put together. Explain to the uh, audience what, what flat, flat line. lining is, all right. 
Okay, so I have laid out the fabric. I want you to see that we've got single pieces of fabric that are cutting out the bodice back um, and the belt. Then everything else is cut out in twos. Because these are the streamers on the belt, the sleeves are two, two, bodice, bodice. The only one that's a single is the bodice back and the belt. So then these are all pinned on. I've also checked my measurement on my straight grain so that I know that those are cut on the straight grain or cut out or laid out on the straight grain. So we're gonna cut these out and then I'm gonna show you how to flat line. Okay, everything is on the straight grain. Yes. So that means stripes. Stripes are up, gonna be up, running up right down. where they're supposed mm -hmm. to be. Yes, up and down. You can't cut across. That would look very strange on this. And Cheryl, they have a little bit of extra fabric here, don't they? They do, so they, they do. Could make a mistake and it wouldn't be the, oh, end of the world. It depends on but how big, have, a yeah, big a mistake they make. But so you've um, been given plenty of fabric. fabric to cut this out, yes. And of course we've got to cut off that fold. And there's nothing actually on this that cuts on the fold, which is interesting because we've got the cut twos. The cut twos but um, no folds. But no folds. Because our center back we're not gonna do that. Do you have a particular type of scissors that you well, like to use? Well, it depends. These are really, are really fine scissors. They're um, from Germany, and they just are really sharp, and they're lightweight, because I don't like heavy, heavy scissors. But I don't particularly go with one brand. I have a lot of scissors, and it kind of depends on what I pick up and what feels good that day and how sharp they are. Um, my mom, when one time she was cleaning up my sewing room, and she said, you have got to have the world supply of scissors in here. <laughs> I said, well, you know. We need them. I need them. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can never find them when I want them. Yeah, so. when you're in the, in the, the, in the zone, yes. you have to have. You've got to have your tools. Okay. All right, one of the classic ways of putting closing together is to flat line. And flat line means that basically you're cutting two pieces up, a lining piece and an upper, if it's called for on that pattern piece. And you're going to baste them together, and from then on that exists as one piece. It's not considered two any longer. Um, if you look at antique doll clothing, much of it is flat line, not necessarily with Batiste, but with Tarleton. And that's that uh, gross, not gross, coarse um, cotton that has got some stiffness to it. And a lot of time what flat lining is for is to give the silk more body, or in this case, we're giving the cotton a little more body so that it's not so sheer as you look through it. It's giving you a, back, a backing, but it's also changing the way it drapes. So this is a common thing to do. And what you do is take your pattern piece off and I've done put a part of these already, but here it's gonna say upper sleeve, two cotton file, two batiste, and the batiste is the flat lining. I'm gonna put this aside. We're going to lay this out so you have a mirror image. You always wanna do that after you've gone to all the trouble of flat lining. You don't want two to go the same direction. So we're keeping our straight grain here. Um, like so no that. doubling over. No doubling over. Mm -mm. Everything is on the straight. So then we take our needle and thread, and if you want, if, if you feel more secure pinning this, we can. Uh, but a lot of times I don't. I just kind of manage it without, without pinning. And then you're just going to run very large basting stitches. Don't waste your time doing tiny little stitches on this because they're all coming out when we're finished. So I'm going to do Fast this and furious. in the seam allowance, and it's just to keep these together for the, for the sewing purpose. So it's in the seam allowance. Like I said, they're <coughs> all gonna come out anyway. Um, so you just want these long basting stitches holding the pieces together. And sometimes I do 
the fabric, the, the fashion fabric, like I'm doing here, to the lining. Sometimes I cut out the lining and then I base the, the lining to the fashion fabric. It just depends on what I'm feeling like at that point will work the best. This is a good project to do when you're not in the mood to really have to do the serious stuff. Right. <laughs> this is the, just, this is the easy. It has to be done, but. Yes. You know, when you're not feeling your most talented. It's, <laughs> it's a, a good time to do that. And, and it doesn't actually take very long to do. It's actually pretty quick. I mean, you could do this without basting, but then you have oh, to you spend can't. so much time I'm making it. sure it's, and then the pins get in the way. Now, I always base this together. And the flat lining is, is actually defined on the first page of your pattern. I've got, you know, things like what is right sides together, you know, WST, um, what is flat lining, what seam allowances we use, um, things like that. So you just come to the end. You don't knot it off because actually this is all coming out. So we just come no, to the yeah, end you and fighting. no, you don't. You don't want to make it hard to take out. So we will just pretend that we have all of this done. And then when all of it's finished, I'd take my pins out and I would cut exactly on the same line so that you're going to be dealing with this exactly the same. And you need it exactly on the same line because you want your seam allowances to be accurate. And if you've got one fabric larger than the other, they will not be accurate. And I want to, as long as I'm looking at the sleeve, I'm thinking about the design of the costume. and. I wondered when I was looking at croquet costumes why the sleeves weren't, because we're, we're doing a two-part sleeve, why the sleeves were not tighter fitting like we would usually see. And I decided that this is a sporting costume, and if the sleeves were as tight as we see in other costumes, like in your day dresses and you know walking costumes and that kind of thing, you wouldn't be able to swing that mallet. So they have a little ease right up here at the sleeve cap that ordinarily a two-part sleeve wouldn't have. It would be cut much more narrow here. But I gave it a little ease so that she could actually move her shoulders, which and a lot the, of times they don't. And so, for the doll, we, we need to be able to pose her. Yes, action. we do. We do. Okay, we're going to start out... Um, by treating the bodice fronts differently than the sides and the sleeves. I've, we flatlined everything here, which is just sewing the batiste onto the piece and the seam allowances. But on the fronts, I found it was easier to save yourself a step by just sewing the seam up the front. And of course, I'm sewing it in red so that you can see, but it's just you're running back stitch, so we're just gonna sew that up. Then we will turn that to the back, and then we will flatline it after that. But that gives us a finished front seam right off the bat, which means you don't have to deal with it in any way later. Um, in some patterns, this works. This really slick, and this one is one of them. Some of them just not gonna handle like that. You're probably gonna bind the front or make a placket in the front, but um, on this kind of a straight piece in the front, this is a very simple technique to get you going a little bit faster So we're, we're sewing the front to the lining. Right. And then we're gonna fold it Then we're gonna it turn, it. turn it. Then we're gonna turn it and somehow I got this all tangled up here. That's our first tangle of the day. Yes, <laughs> well, well, to match several yesterday, it's only the reality of sewing. So I think that's gonna be faster if I just unthread it. But we will be doing that and then we're gonna be turning this so that you're it's then it's wrong lovely, line. It's a lovely concept. Yeah wrong sides together, and then we'll flatline the rest of it. So we'll do that on both of these pieces. 
Okay, so now we have sewn the front seam. We've pressed it, pressed it to the back, trimmed it up even again, and then flat lined it here. So now we're dealing with this as one piece like the rest of them. But what we have here on this pattern piece is we have darts. So we need to be able to mark those in some way to sew them. And I really like it to go fast. So what I do is I place this right down. Remember, we've got to move that seam back because we've taken that away now. And then I just put pins in the top and at the bottom. Then I pick up pins again. I pull this up. I turn it over. I stick the pin back in the hole that's already there. Of course, I'm on the wrong side now. Remove the pins from the front. Like that, take off my pattern piece. And now I just fold my dart like that. So this is gonna fold flat. This is gonna be the top. That's a nice little technique. It makes it really fast. Um, this is a little narrow dart down at the narrow bottom. So we're there, take that out, do that. And now we know that we're gonna, this is gonna be the widest part, whoops, down here. And it's gonna taper up to here. It's just, I found with this dress, I needed a little bit of taper. She doesn't really have a bust line, but there is some shape to the body at that part on her chest. So now I'm just going to do a running stitch and sew that dart in the running back. And of course you'd be doing this in white. Of so, course. So you wouldn't have any. So that, no. So you wouldn't be seeing these red stitches, but for our purposes, we need to be able to see the red stitches so you can get the construction. Just taper, just taper it, it up. Off. You just taper it up to it disappears at the top. It looks like you start tapering almost the minute oh, you start. Oh, it is totally starting right from the beginning. That's the widest part is right at the bottom, and from then on, I'm tapering up because when you get to the top, you want it to not jump at that point. You want it to be blended out so that you don't even see the top of it when it's done. Okay, so when I get to that point, that's going to be as high as it's going to go. We'll just back it off a couple of times with little stitches and clip our threads. And voila, there's our dart. Nice. And then... And if that were all white, you wouldn't... It would just, it would just be It would just be invisible there. So in this case, I'm gonna be pressing the dart toward my side seam here, like that. And so we'll do it on the other, we will have done it on the other side. Then I'm gonna jump on to the construction of, of the back first. Whoops, I'm gonna lose my pin cushion here. So we've got a back and we've got two side backs. Now of all the pattern pieces that I have to draft, this is the hardest pattern piece to draft because you've got a convex curve and a concave curve that have to come together at a quarter of an inch. So this always takes a couple of shots to get it right. The other thing, you've got to ease this in to there. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna clip this curve here like that. And that's a technique that's used in a lot of things that have to have yes, curvature. And this, and this makes that back just lay right on the body where a straight piece would never yeah. do it, would never do it. And so it doesn't look like it should work, but it does. It does work beautifully, but you have to know how to put them together. 
So I'm gonna first match up my notches and I'm gonna put a pin there. And then I'm gonna move to here, which is gonna be our underarm. And you can see that there's an ear that sticks out because the right place is where you have a quarter inch seam allowance here and a quarter inch seam allowance here, which means they don't lay like that. This has to overlap. So at that intersection is the beginning of the seam. So we're gonna pin that in place. Then I'm gonna pull, which is why I clipped, and so I can place my other pin in here. Then I'm gonna take this down to the bottom, match the bottom, like that. I mean, with experience, you should, you could do this without pinning it. You just, yes, you but... You just sit and do it. Yeah. But we don't want you until you've done it, oh, 10 or 12 yeah, times. At, at least, yes. And then I'm gonna pull this again so that this is flat on both sides and that gets all of the ease in there. And then we're going to stitch it up at your quarter inch. And it's important that you're really starting at a quarter. So if you need your little sewing gauge to check yourself, do that. If you're good at your eye and know where a quarter of an inch is, you don't need to do that. But I'm just gonna do a little running back stitch up here at a quarter. And I'm making sure that no fabric is making little tucks anywhere. That's the kiss of death, because when you turn that to the right side, that's it's gonna needs, show yeah, really it, big time. Yeah, and it needs this. This is really one of the elegant features. Yes, of right. Hero's costume. Yep. Yes, these shaped these shaped seams are really beautiful. Like I say, as a pattern maker, this is a tricky thing to get right. It takes. Usually it takes me a couple of times on my muslin to get this to, to be laying where I want it to. The good news is this fabric is very <laughs> it's, forgiving. So yes, it is. Be able to. Yeah. Now, when it comes time to to finish this, will they overcast? You're going to be overcasting all seams, and of course, you'll be doing that in white. So two back tacks. And it, here. I mean, it's looking messy because we still have we still have the um, basting stitches. Yes, on. we do. So and those will all be removed. Visual, yeah, yes. those will all be removed, and then visualize that that's going to be white, and that's yeah. going to just look lovely. All right, now also on where we're on step we're on step four of the bodice, I always specify which direction to press the seams. So in this case, I'm pressing them to the center back. And if you press them to the center back, you can see how beautifully oh, that yeah, lays that's in. Really it's good. A gorgeous. Okay. Now we finished the back. I've got the press the seams pressed toward the center back. Now I have pinned the fronts at the shoulder seams and you'll notice there's a little bit of a curve on this seam which is proper for this period like this and now I'm just going to do my running back stitch here and get these attached and of course you know we're doing this by hand because it's convenient here it certainly could be done on the machine. There's no reason not to do these kinds of seams on the, on the sewing machine. It will just speed things up a good bit. But easier to video when we're not on the machine, so. But they could do either, either, either is. Either is fine. I'll tell you, there is a difference when you look at a seam sewn by hand versus one that is sewn on the machine. Anyway, the, the, the hand-sewn seam you'll find to be much more malleable when you deal with it. Um, it lays a little better. 
um, but it takes a little longer. Not long, that wasn't, but a couple of minutes to get to the end here. A couple of back stitches at the neck and clip my threads. And then we'll do the other side. Um, but actually, I think we'll just go to the side seam because it's gonna be identical on the opposite side as we're gonna do on this side. So you got that. This is pinned, ready to go. So now let's match up our bat, our side seams here and we'll just match up front to back here. Put a little, couple of pins in to hold it. Oh, and your seams up here are gonna press to the back. So everything is pretty much pressed to the back. Yeah, yeah. And that's in their instructions. So. Oh, definitely. And it and it and it's important to remember which which way to press. And pressing yep. is it, pressing is a very, very important. important, as we discussed earlier in this video, how important pressing is. I know some people like to have their 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 iron with them at their work table, but I, I don't because I think it is good to get up and move. And get up and move a little bit, I, I agree. Because yeah, it, it, you can get <laughs> very... Yeah, just sort once of... Once you're in the zone. Diff, you, yeah. It's good to get up and move. My watch tells me that all the time. Get up and move. So <laughs> it's a good reminder. Okay. So there's our side seam. It's gonna to press to the back. Okay, so now we can see this is really coming together, coming together. quite nicely. Yes, back, front, all repeat on the other can side. Can I ask you with the back, would you even recommend them using the machine? To on do this? this? Yeah. You, if you're really good on the machine, you can do that. It's much easier to put in yeah, by hand. I would think so. Much easier yeah. because you can manipulate what's going on here with this curve. Yeah. You're able to pull the curve and manipulate the fabric, get your seam allowances lined up here so that you've got not one sliding down or sliding up. How do you uh, feel about doing it by hand almost as a basting concept? And then you could do over that it. and I mean, then I've, go over it. I've done that a yes. time or two. Yeah. Where, or I want that yeah. really sharp right. look. Right, right, right. Okay, so we have our costume put together now. It's been pressed. And so the next thing we need to do is bind the bottom. Now, in your kits, you're gonna find that I've rough cut your bias here, but you still need to cut it out to length. Um, so I'm just gonna cut off the the angled ends here, get it to the it's size. It's pretty well cut, it's just a yeah. little, little trimming they have to just do. Just a little trimming to square off your ends here. Okay, so like we've been doing before, we need to find the center back so that we can get that accurately placed. And we'll just put a little pin there. We will find the center back here and put a pin there. Then we know exactly where this is gonna go. It's gonna be like that. I'll take these pins out, use one to secure it. And then I'm just gonna lay this on. And because we've got bias, it has some stretch to it. We're going to put it over the end a quarter of an inch so we have a turn back. And then we're just gonna work the rest of it in. Keeping our, our darts pressed the right way, the side seams pressed the right way, back seams pressed the right way. Come over here, do the same thing on this side. It's gonna overhang by a quarter. Just get that all ready to stitch. And then we just do 
running back stitch again across the bottom, and then we're gonna turn the whole thing up to the inside this time. And you really do, unless you sew all the time and absolutely know where a quarter inch seam allowance is, just check yourself from time to time and make sure you really are at a quarter because of the size of the seams we're doing on doll clothes. An eighth of an inch or even a sixteenth of an inch makes a big difference in the way things fit. So you really want to know that you've used a seam allowance that's been called for on the pattern. Very, very important. And it's very important to try this as they... As you sew. As you sew. Yep. Make sure it really does fit. Now, um, there are multiple bodies that this could be used for. Um, if, you know, this was specifically mine was sewn for the jointed body, the jointed resin body, but it would be very, very easy to adjust this for a leather body or a wood body. Well, um, and, and with just a very small, small, amount, small, small amount, amount of work, it could yes. be our, our, our Romer Matilda. Ah, it could true. Be, I mean, wouldn't exactly. she look cute oh, in, she a, would. in a croquet yeah, outfit playing with the darling. Yes. And the Hirays would be mean to her. <laughs> oh. Mine wouldn't. Yours wouldn't? But no, I have a sweet one. Okay. <laughs> and actually, if you enlarge this a little bit, it would fit on my antique array. Oh, sure. It wouldn't, it it wouldn't, wouldn't be that much It wouldn't take very work. much adjustment to take this up. I would say if you took it up about 15%, um, the pattern. The is. pattern. About 15 percent, you're going to be right in the ballpark yeah. of where you need to be. Still no, need to make up your muslin for the bodice. I mean, the skirts are only adjustable in your waistband and your length, so they're easy. But your bodice, you still want to work up a muslin and make sure that it's going to work for and you. And the people that have, buy the kit, they will have the pattern, which they have unlimited use for their yes. own personal use, they can do whatever, they can make it for whatever they, they want, want, how many they want, it's yeah. no limit. Right. Yes. They just can't copy it off and sell it on uh, eBay. No. Please don't do that. Because we'll, we'll get you. We will get you. Nothing makes me more angry. <laughs> well, it's kind of, the, the thing that's bad about that is, you know, they've, you've done the work, you've put the effort into it, and then someone just... Photocopies it and photocopies makes it your money. And, and takes $25. Yeah, right. And that doesn't encourage this um, art form to go on. Um, That's right. Oh, yeah, yes, there's a certain amount of flattery that someone's going to buy it, but um, it, it's, it's pirated. It is. It's not yours to do that with. That's not yours. Okay, so I'm going to stop at that point and just show you then what happens here. And this gets pressed down like that, and then this is going to go to the inside. And I'd like to see just a sliver of fabric showing here, which means you're not going to see any white. So I'm just going to place a pin here to make sure that I've got... And you're going to press it into that Yes, position. I'm going to... I am. And then I'm going to turn this down here. Like I think that. it's very interesting, Cheryl, that you, you do this freehand where a lot of people would want to be pressing this before they do it. But you don't have that much really fabric to work with to... No. And I, since it's on the bias, it could get kind of wonky. Yeah. Okay, so then you're going to take your, let me reverse this pin so I can manipulate this in. So remember, we left the quarter inch over, so now you've got to tuck the quarter inch to the inside like that and secure that. And again, that's sitting just back from the edge so that you don't see that from the outside. You want all of that hidden inside. But that makes a beautiful finish to the bottom of that. Shall we? Okay, now, through the magic of delayed television, we have a finished binding on the bottom, and that's what it looks like. 
can even in red barely see anything here because I caught those stitches those red stitches into the, the lining of the batiste so that it never came through the outside. So that's finished. So now we have to go ahead and finish the top, which is gonna be our bias neck binding. And we're going to fold that half, find our halfway point here, and then mark our halfway point here, which I'm just gonna eyeball that way. And we'll place those two together at our center back. And we'll work our way around just like we did on the bottom. We'll work our way around to the center front, giving ourselves a quarter inch overhang here, like that. Secure that. Put an interim pin in place. And you can see I'm having to use now, not having, wanting to use this bias so that it hugs the neck a little bit. So we're pulling that slightly as we're getting this into place. We just laid it here. You can see it would really be short, mm -hmm. but we're not doing that. We are going to utilize the fact that we've got the stretch there to use, overhanging a quarter, and then working this in like that. And it's that. important we get this right because this fl frames are face. It is. And it really adds a, a really fun part to this bodice is to see these little, this little bias that pulls up, the stripe pulls up off of the skirt. So you've got your underskirt in that. And now you've got a touch of it at the neck and then we will have a touch at the sleeves as well. Okay, so stitching this on at a quarter of an inch. We will be just straight stitching across here. Making sure we don't have any little puckers or tucks back there. I'm really working it down and feeling what's going on behind. And, and if you need to look, you go, okay. yes, I am pulling as I go. So we're using the bias to bind the edge rather than a stand-up collar. A stand-up collar would be a similar application to this, except that it wouldn't completely wrap the edge of this of the neck. This is going to completely wrap the edge of the neck. And that's what a binding is. is to and this would be an awfully tiny collar if it were. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, they do exist, but they yes. But I, you know, I like, a lot of times I like stand-up collars on dolls because it it just kind of <clears throat> snugs up the top of the top of the garment up there. And depending on how long the neck of the doll, we've got some with practically no neck, so stand-up collars don't work at all. And this bias binding um, would work much better for that, this design element anyway. Okay, pushing those seams to the back at the shoulders. So we've rolled, we've stitched it on the one side, right sides together, we roll it over the collar like that, turning the seam allowance under, and now we're just gonna slip stitch it to the edge. And you can see how beautifully that rolls. We've got it rolling beautifully because it was a little smaller than our neck edge. And that made the, the bias just hug over, over this, this neck like that so that it there's no puckers or anything. It'll be just lined perfectly that way. So we'll just finish up this, and then we can set the sleeves. That'll be the next part. If you hear grunting and snorting, it's not us. <laughs> yeah. The bulldogs are going out for their, their afternoon walk. Yes. <laughs> we invited Annabelle to come sew with us, but she... She, she wasn't, wasn't very guy. interested. No. So that's boring stuff for her. I'd rather go out. So just the usual, run it through, pick up a couple of stitches, run it through the edge. And what stitch are we doing to? Just slip stitch. Just, just slip stitch. stitch. Yeah. So we're also known as overcasting. No, it's yeah. not overcasting no. stitch. No. no. Slip stitch is what you do for a hem where you're rolling. Oh, yeah. You're yeah, picking yeah. up yeah, your right. stitch, going along the the fold and until you're sliding along the fold and 
So it's kind of one tiny... Um, one tiny pick. And then and, one longer right, under. Right, and then one longer under. And the pick is not going through to the front. Right. It's only Grabbing going a couple of fibers. Of the, of the lining. And if, the you, if you've gone through... Then You're you going to see it on the other you side, to, and you to need to pull adjustance. it out. Yes. Pull it out and try it again. And we'll it's really red. see how you do, because this is red. This red thread. <laughs> if I turn it over and you see red stitches, you're going to go, oh, she didn't do it right, need to take it out, do it again. You know, everybody thinks that just because you've sewn a long time that you know never make mistakes, but that is not true. It's, you know, mistakes are a learning process is what they are. And so I make the same mistake over, <laughs> over and, and over, over and over again. <laughs> the learning process. <laughs> oh. But I'm not burdened with uh, getting upset about it. So no. it's just the way it's life. And ultimately, in any, any, any of these projects, it comes down to the enjoyment of when the garment's done and how, yes. it, how it looks on the doll and, and the fun you've had doing yes. it. Yes. Well, I remember, I think, one of my most memorable sewing experiences was when Louise Hedrick asked me to do sewing on the raffle for the Rose Percy event in Milwaukee. Oh, yes. That was and wonderful. that was, oh, that was fun. But where I did it was on a cruise ship. Oh, nice. And every afternoon I couldn't wait to get back to my room and sew because it was just so pleasant sitting there watching the ocean go by, relaxing in my room. The sewing was fun. Um, and I knew it was going to a good cause in the end. Oh, so yeah, damn it did. Yeah. You know, that event um, was one of the first donors to the soldiers' home in Milwaukee that um, was was built during the Civil War and uh, a colossus place. Ah. And um, uh, they just um, renovated the whole property. Oh. With a tune of, I think, $40 million. Oh, or my goodness. Like but actually, the Rose Percy money was the, some of the first money that they That came in that to came use in. for that? Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. So if, if you go to the property, there's a, a plaque. You know, oh, really? Uh, you know, we're, we're very proud of yeah. that. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. it's, it's back to its original cause. Right. So there we are. Nice Beautiful. binding. Very few red stitches. That's good. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on. There's, there's a, uh, no, I'm not going to show you okay. that. I'm not going to show you that. No. You wouldn't notice that. I wouldn't if, notice if, that. If it, if it were yeah, white. Right. right. And we also see that it's going to line up in the front, which is important here, because we have to eventually put buttons. And I'm just putting four buttons on the outside, those two hole buttons. And I'm putting hook and thread loops which on the we've inside, already, we've which you've already, already demonstrated. So. so if you need to know that, go back, go to, back the to the skirt. That, to go back to the skirt where I show you how to do thread loops. Okay, so that part of the bodice is finished. We'll go on now to the sleeves. Okay, that bodice is coming along beautifully. It's all ready now for the sleeves. So we're going to construct the sleeve and the lining separately, and then we're going to put them together. So we're just going to do our usual seam up the side of the sleeve, and this time we're doing it over the long curved part of the sleeve. I like to start with this one first. And we'll do repeat then for the lining, the same seam. Then we're going to be pressing our seam toward the undersleeve. So it's not flat out, it's Yeah, no, the... it's not opened up, it's pressed together. Many times, it depends on, on exactly what you're after, but most of the time in this kind of sewing, we do not open seams. There's only some reasons for opening a seam, and that would be like down the center back would be a good place to open a seam. 
also um, on our overskirt where I had the seams coming down that A. I wanted those pressed open because I didn't want the bulk of two layers to be underneath when I put the tabs up. But generally speaking, I assemble like we did on the bodice. We sewed the seams together and then we pressed them together to one side. And then you only have one overcasting to do instead of both edges of the sleeve, you overcast them as one. But you have to think when you're designing patterns, what are you looking for in the end? Are you looking for um, something flat, something to lay right? Usually I'm looking to make it so that it is as smooth as possible when I'm finished. So I have to think about, do I want those seams together? Do I want them pressed open? Um, and Cheryl, this is something they could also do by machine if they want. Absolutely. Absolutely would be much quicker to do by machine. And both are historically? Correct. Correct. Yes. Yep. Yes, much to the surprise of our group that closely observed and documented the Rose Percy wardrobe, we were just dumbfounded that we found so much machine stitching on Well, it was available and it was it was, it was a status symbol to yes. have a machine. Yeah, and a status symbol to have clothing with machine stitching on it. But, you know, we and kept going and... Are these really, really tiny, really even hand stitches? Or is this machine stitching? And it was machine stitching. And you find that also in real Hure wardrobes. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it appears regularly. It would depend on who the home worker, what, whether they had a machine or not had a machine. Right. But you see both. Yeah. OK, so we've got both of our pieces now ready to go. We've got this with our, our seam pressed to the undersleeve. We've got the matching coordinating batiste for that. Then we're going to place these right sides together and match up our seams here like this. And then we'll sew across the bottom of the sleeve. using your quarter inch seam allowance. You don't have anywhere in this this kit that it isn't a quarter inch. No, no, I don't think I do. I think that everything is a quarter inch when you're sewing. There may be some turnings that are something different than a quarter inch, but all of your seams, I think, in this are quarters there's any exception to that. But read the pattern? Yes, definitely read the pattern. It's step by step, and, and please construct in the order that I've asked you to construct, because it's there for a reason to be I followed. I try if I'm following a, a pattern that I don't know. I mean, I don't use patterns that often, but when I do use a pattern, someone else's pattern, if there's something I don't understand, I. I take a highlighter pin to it. Ah, good idea. And that helps me to remind me, you know, cut uh -huh. to whatever. Right. Um, the, the grain of the fabric, anything like that, that I might make a mistake. Mm hmm That's a great idea. Because we do, we do make mistakes. Really? Yes. <laughs> yes. You're, you're not it's alone. Usually the same you're not one. alone. <laughs> if I, could, if I yes. had a dollar for every time I have strung a doll and put the legs on backwards. <laughs> Or sewn a seam and had to take it yeah, out for some yeah. reason, yes. And it's really, it happens. It's really always your good seams, too. Yes, like, right. That's a really good one. And, uh, and really hard to remove, yes. Okay, so we've sewn that across. And remember, I'm doing this really quickly. Believe me, in my own sewing, if I were sitting here sewing... Um, in my own time, I would be doing a much neater job than this. Don't don't think that well, I. Well, and it's also in red, so it's yes, amplified it's, and yes. a little squiggly. So now we're going to press the seam allowance toward 
the fashion fabric here and then we're going to fold this like this and we're going to match up those cuffs what cuffs the bottom of the um the bottom of the sleeve, sleeve opening. opening which is the wrist opening obviously and then we're just going to sew the whole thing as one like a tube like a tube and we'll just pick this one up which is already started and show you this so this is going to come down like so and then this lining is going to be turned and this after could, we press this this same. could be done by machine yes definitely enough to get it together so I can go to the next step. This makes such a nice cuff, when, or not cuff, bottom to the sleeve on, on your wrist when you're finished. It's easy and I think neat. What you're, the technique of your do, what you're doing now is a real labor-saving yes. thing rather than you know, just doing it one, flipping it out over. And, and trust that, me, Victorians wanted to save labor. <laughs> Did they? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and they would, they would really put the, the, the intense work would be the things that you would see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if this wasn't going to be seen, it, it's it'd be done fast. fast. And, My stitches would be much closer together than this. They wouldn't be these long, long stitches. Well, we can't keep the public waiting. <laughs> no. about this class is they can take as long as they That's want. It's true. There's there's no deadlines on there this no and you deadlines. can watch the instructions over and over and over again. And be sure to give us some feedback on these classes. I mean this is yeah. going to be the first time we've done these so um, it's going to be fun to see people's reactions to this. We hope. Yes. <laughs> well reactions one way or the other. Yes. But I think I think, because there's an awful lot of people who would like to be here at the Grovian taking classes that, for whatever reason, can't be. Um, it's a big world, too. It is. It is. And this is a way for you to participate in your own way and get the instruction. You get everything except you don't get... You don't get the great food. You don't get the great food. And you don't get that view of sitting and sewing and seeing beautiful dolls in the cases, which is well, a I real mean, thrill. I'm sure that there are many people that have doll rooms that they sew and filled with beautiful dolls. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to take... We would take this to the ironing board, and I'm just going to finger press this seam down. It's going to press to the undersleeve again, and... Then we're going to turn it, and we're going to be turning our outer fashion fabric over the lining. And, and that you just have to kind of take your time to, yeah. to get it just... Just so. And now we can see our lining sticking out a little bit, so I'm going to push that in because we certainly don't want to see that hanging below yeah. our fabric, our fashion fabric here. 
and I think that's that's where your finger pressing really comes yes. in. Yes, and you can see my stitches are not tightened enough, but that you get the idea that that's what that what that finished edge looks like. And then of course, take that to your dolly little dolly ironing board and press that down too, so it's nice and crisp. Now we have to deal with the upper part here. So first, we want to get this lined up so that we are matching our notches here because we know that's where that belongs right there and we'll put a pin in there we got a little bit of extra fabric in there that we didn't need and you have to fiddle with this yeah. You yeah. just have to fiddle with it, people. And what we don't want to do is twist this all up, which is what I think has just happened. So, there we go. And it's got a nice shape. It's got a nice yeah. body. Yeah. So what do we, we need to next base that together? We need to base that together, and then we're going to put gathering threads in that. Um, and and then we're gonna fit it into our bodice here. Okay, now we have one sleeve that I'm gonna demonstrate the setting on. And now that we've got it put together, you can see the curve in the sleeve and you say, okay, so which arm does this go in? Well, if you hold it up here, you're gonna see that the curve is gonna go this way. Or if you put it on this side, you're gonna find that her arm goes backwards. So and that's it's pretty not a, easy. It's, it's not, not a good, good look. look. It's not. You're right. So we know that this. But we've all set one in backwards, <laughs> backwards before, two. for sure. So we've got two rows of machine gathering here. And the reason I went from hand sewing to machine gathering on our gathering is the difference in the kind of stitch. When you are hand sewing, you are basically doing one thread up and down and up and down, whichever, you know, however your pattern is. When you're machine stitching, you're two threads and it's interlocked, which means that it pulls up much neater when we pull up our stitching. So we're going to take... And this the, is a little, yeah, little fussy work. You yeah. just have to... So we're going to take and we're going to pull this. And again, we're working the gathering across the threads. We're not pulling this end. It's really important technique to learn to pull that across. Remember I said that because this was a sporting costume, we were going to have a little puff in the sleeve so that the arm could move to hit your croquet ball. Okay, so we have that. Now we have a couple of helps here on this sleeve. We have a little notch up here, which should correspond with your seam right here. So that would be the center. Right, and then we have a seam here that we're going to hopefully line up this back seam to. Which is always elegant. Yes, you when you that. can see that continuous line. So we're going to put this in, and the first thing I'm gonna do is find my notch and I'm gonna match my notch to my stitching line here. I will put a pin in the gathering side of that sleeve, on the sleeve side. Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to check. Gotta pull this back up again because it's loosened up a little bit. I'll make that snug in here nicely. And now we can see that that seam is going to line up. So you use your fingers as a, <laughs> yes. you know, you've, you've got to just get in there. you got to get in there. And we're going to be matching that seam line together. And then we're going to put a pin there so it doesn't move. And then we can adjust the gathers around that until it and until it looks right. And I like to look on this side too and see that we have a lot of gathers here and we don't have many here. So I'm gonna kind of 
work those down a little bit so that it's a little more evenly distributed. You want most of them to be at the sleeve cap, which is right here at the top, but you want it to be a little bit all the way around. So now we've got to work our sleeve into the front. Got a lot of threads here to work through, but I want to be sure that my seam allowances or my cut edges are matching here. That seam goes to the back. And then one more pin should do it here. And then we'll check our gathering on the back side to make sure that it's looking good. Let's check that. Again, we need to just manipulate those gathers down a little bit like that. Okay. And everybody has their own little tricks that yeah. they do to... to get that in. So now we're we going to We used take... to have a lady that worked for us that the favorite thing she loved to do was sleeves. Really? Yes, she That's was my That's usually hero. everybody's fault. She you know, I don't want to do the sleeves. She loved to She do. loved to set the in sleeves. The more complicated they the were. The better. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to pull the gathering threads out of the way, and now I'm just going to stitch this in, and I'm not going to backstitch it, because if I need to make adjustments, those backstitches are really hard to take out. So basically, I'm just going to do a running stitch around here. Sometimes I will, I will baste. Yeah, that's it in and then go and with take a look, look and <laughs> take then, a look and then commit. If I baste it, it usually is perfect. <laughs> but if I don't baste it, it's and I go, oh, oh, oh dear, well, I have to oh that. dear, because it, it is an important feature of of the fit of the whole oh, item. Yes, and bad sleeve setting really sticks out. We could do a song instead of green sleeves, bad sleeve sleeves. setting. Bad <laughs> sleeves. And don't, don't forget to use a quarter inch seam allowance. That's what you've been allowed here. So you don't want to short it to an eighth because then the sleeves really aren't going to fit in there correctly. And every time, you know, you're, you're, you are making the sleeve hole bigger by... Sewing exactly. into it. You so are. You don't want to overdo yeah. that. Yeah. And the shoulder's too short. Now, will you overcast this? At the I will. I'll be trimming this down to an eighth of an inch and overcasting tightly here and to that finish helps, that up. That helps with the shape of this. It thing. does. It gets your seam allowances out of the way. Um, we spend more time on a garment doing the finish work than the actual mm, trim work. Mm -hmm. and, and that was true in the 19th century, too. Yeah. Okay, ow. So, stick myself with these nice sharp pins. All right, so let's take the pins out, turn it to the right side, and see how choose. we've done. Yes. Got a nice meet match up here. Oh, nice. Yeah. This is sitting where it's supposed to be. That seam should be about halfway in between here. Oh, it looks we've great. We've got our little oh, gathers at the sleeve cap. There we there are. We go. So now we can commit to really stitching that in permanently. And for that, I will really do a running, not a running back stitch. I'm going to do a plain back stitch. I'm going to cut out. And then you'll the, finish that off with an overcast. Yeah. And well, then I'll trim it down to an eighth of an inch. And then I'll overcast really tightly. And you pull out all the extra. I'll, yes, I'll threads. pull out all the basting and, and all of and that. And that'll make it very clean. Yeah. And then, of course, visualize this as white. This would look exactly. It's going to look a lot, look a lot better. But that is the sleeve set right there. Well, that's it's great. Really nice. Okay. Yeah. All 
Okay, so we've got our bodice finished. We don't have actually two sleeves it in, but at least you've got one, the idea of the one. So the, the next thing to do is the ruffle down here. And this I had a lot of fun with using the stripe. So I take the stripe piece and press it down a quarter, press it down another quarter, and then I slip stitch this all the way down. So I've got one side that isn't done and one side that's been finished here. So you can see that's that. That's a great technique of just look self-decoration. Self how fun does that look? Oh yeah. It's just really that could adds. That used for so many, yes. so yeah. many applications. Right, and so simple. All you're doing is essentially hemming, and hemming this, those edges. And what's nice about using this as a trim, you can take an expensive fabric that you might not want to buy but if the cost is just the fabric and it's not lace, it's not ribbons, it's not beads, and this is very, very 19th century. Yeah, a, 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 totally. a lot of self-trimming at that time. Yes. They didn't add a lot of other things. Yeah, so, so that's really great. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I am going to steal your idea because you know there's a big <laughs> bolt of pink and cream stripe. That's back true. There, there that is. Needs, that this would work really beautifully would. on. Yes. Okay. I mean, you could though to make it even more sensational. I mean, not on your costume, but you could run a piece of ribbon down the center of it. Yes. And just have a fabulous like a straight trim without a ruffle. Right, or you could run that ribbon down the center, put your gathering threads over that, pull That's it up, true. Yeah. and you would have a little ruching yeah. running all okay. the way down the center of that. So we've given you all... All kinds of you've, you've, hints you've, for other projects. It's yeah. worth the price of admission yes. just for that. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that I already have done that. And now we're going to, oh, first we're gonna half it so that we know where we are in our placement here. So that's going to be our halfway point. And we have to have a halfway point on the sleeve. So I'm going to establish, I'm going to put my seam lines together, and here's going to be a halfway point here, and then ultimately this is going to be where it joins. So the top down and the here. bottom. So we've got the top and the bottom, and that's established by putting the seam allowances together. So we're gonna pull this up, this ruffle up, and I'm now, only using- do you using, tie it off on one end or are you just- Um, depends. I probably, I mean, on this it, one- um, handle it pretty gently. Yeah. Um, on this one, I haven't yet, but I probably will, just so I can keep it, because then it doesn't work out itself out, so let's actually do that. Um, and you have to see that that one edge is not secured yet. So that's kind of wanting to stick up in a funny way. Yours will not do that. And I used a single thread for gathering, not a double, which I usually do. The double is going to lie flat, flatter than a single. But in this case, I wanted a lot of sort of action on that you ruffle. You want it to be exuberant. Yes. Flowing. So, and it, it actually has a lot oh, of personality. It's got a lot, a lot of life to it, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to start here. And it's I'm just, just going to estimate. A, Cheryl, it's just a nice finish for yeah. a, a cuff. Yeah. So we're there. Playful. We and, and we need to move it out just a little bit more. Okay, now we're gonna take it and I'm going to join the ends. Now, I went through a lot of different scenarios when I was figuring out how to do this. And I found that if I joined the ruffle first and then did the folds to the right side, all the raw edges were showing on the seam. I mean, if you just try, it doesn't seem like it should be that way, but that's what happens. So I finally just said, okay, let's just do this as a regular seam. So I'm just going to match this up and do a quarter inch seam allowance across there. And in this case, I may go not 
quite a quarter. I may make it just a little smaller than that. I'm still leaving that one you've adjustment. Got your, you've got your pulleys I've there. I've got my adjustment there. I'm sorry. The camera. Oh, you just... should know that Cheryl has to sew with me right in her <laughs> space. Yes. So... Oh. The, the, you better like the people you do this with because it's <laughs> it's pers no up close personal, and personal. Space. <laughs> yes. There's no personal space. It's like living with a bulldog. There's, there's yes. no such thing as personal, personal space. space. this off. We're trying to get the, the class as much in close as we can, <laughs> but there's times where it's it's not it, possible. It's, there isn't an angle. Oops. But we could, per, maybe we could mount these, the camera on like um, a miner's helmet. That would probably... <laughs> And I can do my own filming. Yeah, you can yeah. do your own filming. <laughs> right. And then I only have to worry about my sewing, but I've got to be That's worried right. about what's, what's being recorded. <laughs> okay. So now let's try it back on and see if we need to snug up that gathering any further. Oh, I'm just going to press this finger press this to one side. So you just kind of do a little fold over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's gone. Yeah. And I think I've worked out some of the some of the gathering. So my guess is I'm going to be pulling up just a little more. Now this is going to set just over this edge. So a smidgy. Just a smidgy over. So we don't want our hands covered up. But we've also got this seam that hasn't been put in there. Um, so let's find our pull threads, which we know are the long ones. The other side is tied off. Get this trick back up. Something you when you start to sew it, you'd still leave the. the I would pull just so that just I've got the ability to pull that a little bit tighter if I see that it's it needs it. So then, and this keeps bothering me that this isn't stitched down, but you, it, well, yours will not look like that. No, they'll they'll, they'll yeah. follow the directions, directions and, and be all prepared, down. right? So you're distributing your gathers evenly. And then you're just going to tack, and I'm going to put my knot behind. And this is a case they just have to. Yeah. They have to eyeball it. Yeah. They're just There's going no to tack. quartering it. It's no, so small. No. So you're just going to tack it down with the, um, fairly large stitches. It doesn't have to be smalls. And then you get the idea of what that's going to going to look like on the bottom of the of the sleeve. It's very very cute. Well, shouldn't we come back and show them when all finished with all I the... I think we should. We should. Okay, yeah. we'll be back. Okay. So now you can see here, both of the hems are down. We're gathered. It's tacked to the, to the jacket, to the bottom of the sleeve, and how pretty it looks and how lovely our hands look that way. Um, if we uncross her here, you can see there they are like that. There's the ruffle, half the, about half the ruffle is hanging over, and it just yeah, it's darling. looks so cute. And it looks, it'll look very playful with the croquet yes. mallet and balls right. to, play, to play. 
is ready to help. I really love this technique, Cheryl. Good. All right, well, we're okay. moving on. All right, now we're getting down to the finals on our bodice. And the last part of the bodice is the belt because I actually attach the belt to the bodice. So that's why it's included in part of the bodice. So we start out with our fabric for the belt in this pattern. And we're going to leave, we're going to fold this in half. And here we are. And we're going to leave an opening right here. On the pattern, it's got the two dots that say, don't, you know, leave open between the dots. And that's going to be really important as far as the turning is concerned. So you're just going to stitch down here and you're going to stitch from there to the end, not across the ends, just at that point. On your pattern piece, I've also given you three illustrations of the procedure to, to do the belt. So we've already taken this, folded in half, and we're right to here, which is step number one. We're gonna sew those seams down here. Then we're gonna take this piece, and those seams are going to be in the center of the back. So we need to open this seam and Press it open. So this is one of the few times where you have a flat. Yes. You press it down flat. You're going to press it down flat and you're pressing it open. You're pressing your seam Because you don't open. want bulk or... or a... uh, no. This is the least amount of bulk I can get here around the... So you're just going to open it up. Set, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to actually pin it so it stays there because it was wanting to roll on me. We're going to pin it. And then you'll take this to the ironing board and you're going to press this down just with the tip of the iron here. And you're going to press where the opening is here because we have our opening. You're going to press that down as well and then just continue. And there's really no need to sew that up at this point. No, not at this. You can't actually at this point. You've got to wait. So we're going to press that down. So let's take it over to the ironing board and do that Okay. Part. We'll get it ironed and we'll be back. Yeah. Okay, so we have our belt and this is our step two, which means we have pressed the seam open all the way down flat like that. Then you can see it gets stitched across the end like this. And then we make a point on the other on the other end by I'll tell you a couple of little tricks we're gonna have it be here where the top of it is and then so I've put a pin here so we know that that's the top and then I'm gonna pin, put a pin across so that I know that that's where it's going to start and end Okay. So you just eyeball this. I right? eyeballed it. Okay. I, you know, I could tell if that was uneven, which it is a little bit right now. But I've already stitched it for you so that you can see, actually, and it's easier to see on the back without the seam, that it's very even. And I've come up nicely in the middle, which is very important, and then gone down to the other side. Then I took my scissors and I trimmed, and I'm actually, I trimmed up the side. I'm going to trim a little bit across the top and down the other side. And ultimately, this is going to be done in white rather than... Ah, uh, yes. So when right. you're looking at this, um, it, it's going to be different because it's going to be in white. Yes, and it will be actually harder to see yeah. that we get this point exactly right. So now we take these wonderful... Hemostat, like I've never seen before. <laughs> Incredible. I said, it's like, no, this is a hemostat. We don't mess around here. Yeah. And I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to just put a little bit of that in the jaws and then pull it through. Like that. Then we'll do the other end. And I'm doing gently so that we don't rip you don't anything want to bust out. Open the seam. No, but you can see we've just caught the end there, and we're going to slide it down. And you have to be careful with hemostats yes. because they can 
chew up the fabric. They can, because they've got nice big yeah. ridges in here. And which we want them but, to have. But, to, but. But they can chew up, so you yes. have to be gentle with yes. them. Yes. So now we're going to pull this the rest of the way through. Now remember, we've got our seam going down the back. And now we've got to get those points out. And I gingerly use the end of a small scissors to That's a really this, nice point. Put this back out. And I'm gonna push the top of it. And I'm also gonna push out the corners over here. Just go just a little bit more here. And maybe even take a pin and yeah, pull that's, that's this a great out, trick. out, because we want to be able to see that has really come to a nice point. And there it is, right there. Sometimes I like use that. a seam ripper to. Oh you know, yes, uh huh. To, Would to pull that, sharp. yes, but, to get that. You, know, part. you have to, you have to be confident in what you're doing. Yes, that so you're not going to put it right through the corner yeah, and be just, really upset with yourself. So it's kind of the thing to do with an old, worn-out seam ripper. Yeah. And so we'll do this. Same thing here with squaring up our ends. And if you notice, the scissors I'm using do not have a sharp point on them. They're somewhat blunt, which makes it safer because it'd be really easy to stick yeah. that right through the fabric. Okay, so now at this point, we will take this back to the iron, ironing board and we'll really press it out flat from here so that it, it's nice and pressed. And then we'll come back, and we've still got the opening, so we're just going to whip stitch this closed. Now the next part of this, the last part of this, is the top stitching. So it needs to be top stitched in red all the way around, including the nice point. Come back up to here and square it off here. And let me do that and come back and show you the Should finish. Should we talk about the um, stitch oh. size for... Oh, but for they, top stitching, yeah. yes, that's a good point because I don't I mean, use I, a regular stitch length on that. I go up a little bit, not to a gathering stitch length, but just in between regular stitch length and gathering because it gives you a longer stitch, which makes it much more visible in my eyes. And when you look at beautiful top stitched items and couturier wear, you want to see a nice stitch there, not a really tiny stitch. And I think the audience should really practice. Top stitching is not an easy thing no, to do. It is not. You know, I am not that good at it, but um, Leo here, who, who's a master at uh, top yes, stitching. Yes, he is. So, so, I mean, he can do huge runs of things you know, 40 outfits all top stitch. Yeah. Mine would be a disaster. <laughs> so a so they out. really need to decide what size stitch yes. works for them because right. all machines are different. Yes, I would say I could dictate what on my machine, it's uh, I use around a three to three and a half, but that's on my Bernina. And not every sewing machine has that same stitch length. Well, we don't have a big old fancy Bernina. No, you don't. No. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay. The finishing of the belt. We went upstairs and top stitched this beautifully. And then there's only one part left to do, and that's to make the streamers that go down the back. So in order to do that, you're going to take your, your pattern piece and do, again, what we've been doing right along, folding a quarter, folding a quarter again, and then slip stitching these edges. And then this time you're gonna fold up the bottom a quarter, a quarter and slip stitch that and press all that really well. Then you're gonna take that upstairs or wherever your sewing machine is and top stitch that so that that's all held down. Oh, and that's the lovely. last thing you're going to do is make a little pleat here at the top of each of your streamers. And when you get this on your doll, it's going to overlap like that. No, it's like that. I'm trying to think of which size I have her closed on. I have her closing on that side. And then when I get, the, get this on the doll, then I'll mark my center back, and the streamers will be attached at the center back, kind of coming out in a V like that, so that that's, that's your finish. So you'll just take those and whip stitch them to the back of the belt. And then she has one button that goes here, and let me show you on the actual doll the way this is all gonna come together in the back. 
Okay, so now you can see I've got the little pleat at the top on both of the streamers, and they're tacked under the belt back here. Now, the one thing that I haven't discussed yet is we have um, gathering down here for a little bit of a touch of that same trim that we used on the sleeves. So we've got shorter pieces and you do the fold, the fold, the gathering down the middle, tacking it to the streamer like that on both S sides. Same concept as the cuff. Yes, exactly just, the same concept as the cuff. Just a whole lot easier. Right, right, right. So the other thing that I need to show you here is that get her undone, is the opening here, that I've decided to tack the belt to the bodice. So that way I don't have the movement of the belt up and down. And that seemed to really work well on this and probably on lots of other things as well where you've got an over belt but you don't want it to be moving around. So I just tacked that up to the bottom of the bodice, and I've got it overhanging probably a sixteenth of an inch down here. Mm -hmm. um, you can I'm also see my three hooks here. I've got one on the belt, one in the middle, one on the top, and the uh, eyes, just like we did on the skirt here, or the bars, not eyes, the bars, and the one on the belt. And I wanted the belt to be really, really snug. So when I did that one, I really with the skirt in place, skirts in place, put this over like that, so it really snugs down. And then I go in and do my other hooks like that. But, but everyone needs to fit their doll. Exactly. To get the, the look. To, to get that look, look. Just right. Yep, you're exactly right. So the last thing to do on this would be to sew on your, your five buttons. I'm just spacing those down the front and then the fifth one sits on the belt. And that is your costume. Could they um, use red thread for the button? They buttons? could, they could do that. Somehow I didn't want to accent that. I'm not sure why, but you would only have, since these are two hole buttons, yeah, you'd you only wouldn't have, have, you wouldn't have your crisscross, you'd only have your bar across, but you could do that. You could do that. And if someone has some fabulous heirloom buttons uh, from their yes, great grandmother, it it's always nice to use It'd those. It'd be nice to utilize just, this yeah. on, on this costume. So. We have completed the costume. We have completed the costume, and the only thing left we have is the hat. Okay, well, we'll be on that shortly. Okay. All right, now this is the remainder of our kit. All the rest of it's been used up. And what's left? Our hat. So we're gonna take out information that you need to do your hat form and the little pieces, the straw, the little flowers. And these you're really lucky because I've included the little flock flowers, some from Korea, some from the Philippines that aren't available very easily anymore. So you've got enough to decorate with and a little bit of ribbon that um, will tie together with your red. So we're gonna start out with the hat form and you're going to have a piece of poster board in here that has a shiny side. And you're gonna cut out your pattern pieces. You're gonna draw them onto here, transfer them onto there. And including um, this line in here, we're going to be clipping two, and then that's gonna bend up. And I will show you what the finished product looks like. So you've got a brim, you've got the side crown, you've got the crown, and then I included an extra little piece in case your crown wants to dip. This will just sit on the top and make it flat. So you'll cut these out, transfer the markings onto here, and then we'll make the hat form. So in the miracle of television, we have <laughs> already have one. And this one I did out of the old brown cardboard because I didn't have the poster board at the time. But the same thing, you, you start out by gluing, overlapping, your brim and gluing it in place. And a lot of times I will take a little clip just to hold it. Now let's talk about glue for a minute. I'm gonna use two kinds of glue on this hat. One is instant grip, which is a white water-based glue. And that's what we're gonna to use to put the hat together with. 
And then the other glue that I like to use... And this will be included in the kit? No, the bottles will be included in the kit. Okay. You, you'll have to buy your bottles of Because we can't mail that. No, no, no. And it doesn't take very much. I mean, I've... I've like, that will be probably do five or six hats, that little bit that's oh, wow. in there. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't take much to do. The Fabri-Tac I like to use for applying the flowers to the hat because when we talk about the hats to begin with, this is one that's off and undecorated. There are several ways to make hats um, with straw. This is a method that I have been using and very happy with, and that is the glue method. Now, obviously, Hure hats were not glued. Definitely not. Some of them were. You think so? Oh, yeah. Okay. They, no, they were. Mm -hmm. All right. They well, glued components. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So the glue method that we're, is what I'm going to teach you today. But if you could take the same construction and you can cheat a little bit by putting little dots of glue here and then go back through and stitch it if you want to stitch all of these rounds on. Um, I find this is quite adequate for me. Makes a lovely shaped hat. It's for the croquet, you were to be shielding their faces from the sun. So that was an important thing for women not to get their suntans. That was not considered cool then. You were trying to stay as white as possible. But you were outside, so you needed to be covered. So here's what this is going to look like on the inside. It's it looks beautiful as beautiful outside. on the inside as it does on the outside. So this is what we're going to be going to be making. Okay, so we're going to go with our hat form already constructed. Brim, the little clip things are facing up. The little clip things from the crown here. Let's show you. Pictures are better than words. These are all clipped into this circle, turned up. This is overlapped and glued and let it dry. Then you're gonna take your side crown, you're gonna overlap that, and you're gonna set it on the brim. So here's our outside is set on the brim. Then we take the crown top and you're gonna clip that down and you're gonna set that into your side crown and glue that in place. So all of this is glued. You see my drawing marks from my pattern. When this is all dry and thoroughly dry because we don't want it moving around on us, then we will take double stick tape. We'll take this clip off because we know this is in place. We'll take double stick tape, about an inch of a piece, and we'll put it all around the outside of the brim. What this does is holds the first layer of straw down so it doesn't go anywhere. Because so once we have that secured, um, we don't we don't need to stick down any further. But we do need to secure the first. And, and this may sound silly to some of you, but this is not part of the hat. This is only the form we're making the hat on. So when we look on the inside, this is not cardboard inside. This is only straw. And if you're careful with this form, you can use it multiple times. So we've got our, our double stick tape all over there. Then we're going to take out our straw. And this is a straw that I use that is really paper straw. It has a base of paper. And why I like to use that versus Swiss straw, which is the other narrow straw that we commonly find, is that this, because it's got paper content, will glue really easily because you're gluing paper to paper. Um, Could you sew it fairly easy, too? Yes, and it sews very, very easily, too. Um, your straws are always constructed like a Chinese finger trap is the best way to say. It's overlaid laid like this and woven like that. So it has stretch to it. And this straw has, if we fray the end a little bit, we can see it has a pull thread on either side. There will be a string running down both sides of the straw. And that we can end up using to help us move the straw to begin with. So, oh, nice. Okay. I don't like to overuse that pull straw, I mean that pull thread, because it distorts the straw 
And because this is like a Chinese finger trap, it gets closer together. You can see how that is moving up and getting a lot wider, or it can get really, really skinny. And I like the fact that it lays straight. So I don't use that any more than I have to. But because that is in there, it means that we can preform the straw like this. So we can get our curves so we don't have to worry about Sticking. And buckles yeah. here. So you see how easy it is to, to oh, move. Oh, yes, that's yeah. fabulous. Yeah, and that's because of the way it's woven like this. So I'm going to cut off that hand I was demonstrating with. And in your kit, oops, you're going to get a bottle with a little needle tip on it. And this is what makes it ever so easy to glue, because you've got control. So I'm gonna start with this on the back, like this. So you're going to put this first row around, and you wanna be sure that you have a very nice edge here and you're keeping your straw nice and flat, but you don't want to see any wigglies because it's going to really show up on your hat when you're finished. So the first row, and you can see I'm placing the straw with my left, I'm pushing with my right, and I'm wrapping counterclockwise. Okay, so now we've met our first where we started, which means now we have to glue because there's we can't stick it down. And the way I glue it is you're gonna get, use your little needle container and I just put some grip glue in it and labeled it so I could remember that that was what was in it. And then I'm going to run a bead of glue here. And that's why this needle container is so nice. I'm gonna run it right on the edge because you're gonna be overlapping your straw about half on your about half, so I usually go about halfway around with my glue, and the nice thing about grip, it's white now, but it will dry clear, and it also stays flexible, so you, your hat doesn't become stiff as a board when you're finished. So now we will start here, tapering it up. I'm placing about half of it over the previous row, placing with my right, I mean left, pushing with my right, and again, you want it nice and even so that it looks like nice, even rows here. And one thing, we're doing a small hat, relatively small hat here. So what you don't want to do is work faster than your glue works. And what I mean by that, the glue needs a while to set up. And if you go speeding around here, you're going to look back and it's all going to be falling apart. That's because you've worked faster than the glue will grip. So now I'm going to give myself again a little bit of a curve. So you're just using your fingers? I'm to using my, it? yeah, I am. I'm not using any pull strings. I'm just manipulating with my hands to get some curve here. We'll pick up the glue. We'll go back again, pick up where we left off. And so they're just that one first yeah. row. That's the overlap. Right. So it's like, putting shingles on a house. Exactly. You're building it like that. Which is also going to make it strong. Uh-huh. Okay, so placement halfway. And if you end up with bubbling up under here, it means you haven't pulled the straw enough in a curve that it, you're trying to make a straight line lay down in a curve. So if it starts bubbling in here, it's because you haven't pulled. So I'm, I'm actually pulling a bit as I'm placing and then pushing it down, and now we're to the end of that. Now so, Cheryl, back. they could do this with a light gluing with little tabs mm -hmm. and then go back and sew it. Oh, the they could. Way. They certainly could, yes. But you really couldn't get this shape without this, this I've, concept. I have sewn hats before with straw, but it is hard to get them to be shaped nicely. And that's why moving, working over the form really, really helps. 
because they have really nice looking have shapes. Have you ever worked with um, straws and, and things and wetted them? Yes. But that's a different kind of straw. Yeah, that is a different. That is natural straw, right, like where this is paper. Um, paper straw. Well, and this yeah. is a very good scale for what we're doing. Yes. So. One thing I love in, in Hiray hats are when they used paint to paint. Oh, yes. And painted those. Yes. Yes. I always love those. Yeah. Well, a lot of times when I finish a hat like this, I will antique it um, with sometimes um, stamping material. You know, the Tim Holtz stamp, wonderful stamping tools. Well, you can just kind of rub over it and make it look mottled and old. Okay, I can see now this is getting very straight and actually my curve's going the other way, so I've got to stop okay, and, stop and, get and got to get my curve back. Well, you've been at this for a while, so you're, you're entitled to, to get doll dressing fatigue. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yes, this has been several very intense days, but it's been fun as well. I never mind hard work. Well, you can't really hang out with Michael and David unless you know how to work. <laughs> True. <'Cause it's... laughs> Place and push. Shall we let you go around yes. that and then we'll come back to the point? Right, so we've gotten to the point of coming up to where the brim joins the crown. You can see right here. Now, when you get to this point, I do a little bit tighter overlap because I've got to bridge this area. So I'm doing the same technique, but I'm overlapping just a little bit closer together here so that we've got more stability at that point. And you can see I've, I've extended my glue beyond what I usually do to give it a chance to set up a little bit because our circle is getting very small now, which means we're probably applying the straw to the glue faster than the glue can dry. So I've uh, put a lot on there. Now we're to that point, we will add a little more glue and I wanna take you up the side, which will not take very long and over the top, which is kind of interesting to do. Always amazes me. Try not to get any glue on the cardboard because what you don't want is a hat glued to your form. Okay, well, we're just gonna continue working here around the hat. Coming up the side now. And we want to be coming up the side at the same time. We don't want to be coming one side way up and the other side not there. And you can adjust that by the amount of overlap you've got to see. All right, we're out of glue now. That's a little precise bottle and that will... Yes, it, this little tip is really handy. It puts just the right amount of glue down Where for do you. Where do you find those? Uh, I ordered those off of Amazon. Okay. <laughs> but I thought it'll make your hat making so much easier to have those, so I decided to buy them and include them in my kit. Now I need to be working out some of this so that we've got these curly cues worked all the way down. I keep working these down the straw. And this is where that actually you can go in and use that pull thread if you want to. I'm still not fond of doing that, but if it makes life easier for you, just 
go in here to the edge and take a needle and pull it out and then you can pull it and it makes it go a little bit faster. Okay, a little more glue and we're almost to the top. Like a drunk driver around the edge. Now we'll spread out to our usual half overlap. Now we're back to the normal. Yeah, to the normal overlap. Oh, and the other thing, I'll just show you how that, this glue takes a while to dry, so if you don't like your what's going on when you're placing it, you can pull it back and put it back down again for a certain period of time. I mean, that's not workable forever, but it works that way for quite a while. Let's see, we're, we're getting so that we're actually it's almost, nice shape. it has a nice shape and it's coming up about the same, uh, same point all the way around, which means we'll make it much easier to go over the top. Goes on, and we're almost to the come over the top part. I've still got to move this on down. We're not going to be using much more straw. I gave you five yards, and you can see that there's several, several yards, yards left. There's a, another, you can, can do, do a small a, hat for somebody. You can do a small hat. Or yeah. Really ambitious, they could do a little. Handbag. Yes, I've, I've, there's some darling handbags done with this. Very simple. As I'm coming around here, we're going to be coming to the edge of the top of the hat, the crown, and whoops, you can see I slid here. That's because I'm working faster than that glue. So I just pulled it back and replaced so it would stay where it's supposed to. Here we are, coming up over the edge. Now, how do we get up there? We're going to pull, that's how we're going to get up there. Really pull. And that pulls up magically, I wow. say, over the top. Oh, yes. I mean, it's just like amazing that this works like that. So I'm really pulling from the outside to make the outside bigger than the inside. And that's what's gonna pull it up over the, over the top. Okay, more glue. And pretty soon we'll be over. Always watching my the amount of space between rows. As you can see now on that one, I'm really coming over to the flat of the top. And we're almost done. Now this is where we're getting very small circles. And at this point, it makes it much, you're getting a very, very tight curve here.
Since we have very little left, I am going to bravely cut my straw and work these curves out here. They're just sliding down the string that's in there. And then it gets a lot easier to do this, to make, to make it form to the top. We're just going to keep going until we have about a quarter of an inch hole left in the middle. That's going to be the end point here. I'm working out any of those little ruffles. the form. Now you can see this kind of dipping down in here. That's one on that pattern. I gave you an extra piece to glue on the top to kind of raise that. But as soon as we get this off, I can reshape that I kind of like around. That. Do you like that little dip in I there? do. Okay. I really do. All right. And that's the thing about hats is this should be Creative. Yes. And Do whatever. Yeah, whatever. Heart's it's, desire. It's, yeah, what the how they feel that it looks good. Yeah. Okay, so we're to the point now. I'm gonna put one more dab of glue there, and then we're gonna stop. And we're gonna show you how to finish this. Okay, so we've come all the way up to where we have this little tiny opening left and we've got to deal with this hanging piece of straw. So in order to do that, we're gonna remove this from the hat form. Remember we had double stick tape on the edge. So we have to pull that off like that. And we're gonna gently pull it off the crown like that. I didn't get too much glue on there, which is pretty good. And then we're going to pull it off the top. So now if there's any places I like to call vacations where, you know, didn't get enough glue, this is the time to go back in and put a little bit more in there. Here you can either do Michael's favorite way, which is down, or we can push it up. Whatever we put it, whichever place we put it, it will dry right. now. Yeah. Both of them are right if yeah. you like it. So I'm gonna cut this at an angle here, and we're gonna take that, and we're gonna put it through the hole like that. And we're gonna add just another drop of glue here here and under here, like that. And we're just gonna 
bend that piece over and it will seal the place at the top like that. So either down or up or flat. And I go back and add just a little bit more glue on the start here so that is nice and neat um, as we cut that a little bit on an angle. And, and if we just put a little glue in there and squish down on it. And if you've got a small scissors, you can go in here and cut a little bit more of that tail off if you want to. I think on this one, I've got a shorter tail right there. But that's it. So very now the fun quick. Part. Now the fun part, which is the decorating. So I gave you the bunches of flowers. I gave you one large leaf, and you're gonna say, now what am I gonna do with that? Because it's way too big in scale. But the one large leaf is gonna make multiple small leaves, and that's what we're gonna use. So we're just gonna cut up the leaf into smaller sections. And then it's down to the scale that we need. And you're just doing it with the scissors. Just very freehand. Yeah, very freehand. There's no there's, there's no pattern. There's for this. no pattern. There's no magic. That you just cut it into little pieces here. And then probably a good idea to ditch the wire that's behind it. Because that's not gonna do us any good. So now we can be creative with what we do with our flowers and leaves. And a lot of times I like to set my leaves in first and get an idea of where. Kind of where, like a flower yeah, arrangement where you put right. your greens in first. And first, yeah. Maybe one over here. You don't have to use all of them. I mean, this is just strictly up to however you think it looks nice. Um, and then you prep your flowers, which we will not need those long stems. And actually, we're going to cut them. They've got the stamen through them, and this is going to slide down if we cut it too short. So I like to leave a little bit here, like that. And you've got plenty of flowers here to decorate with. And, it, and I was fortunate enough to find this little bit of a corally red, like is on the costume so that we have those to do. Tiny flowers are hard to find. <sighs> they are. They are. And then I've got this group of flocked white that are nice to work, to work in. So we just cut those close to the under stem, but not all the way to the top so they don't fall apart. And then we'll just play with the arrangement. Bah, but first we've got to put this little, I thought it needed a little bit of ribbon. So I cut you a ribbon with two diagonal ends and I'm just gonna make it like this. We're gonna do one loop here and one loop here. And then we're gonna sew across it and pull it up. But they can virtually do whatever oh, they want. Whatever you want. There's no wrong way to, no, to decorate. You know, we might not like the ribbon. You might not like so many flowers on it. I mean, this is strictly up to mm -hmm. you. Um, millinery is really fun. One of my favorite things to do are hats. And I, I guess, according to my grandmother, it was since I was a little girl, I made hats out of everything in oh, the house. So. She said, you were the hat girl. <laughs> okay, so we'll take now, we'll switch to the non-water-based glue. And I'm just gonna let it dribble down here. And I've used another bottle for this. Actually, grip would also work for this. Um, this dries a little bit faster. The 
other nice thing about these glue bottles that I really like is they've got a cap that seals them up so that um, you can maintain them, the glue and the ability to do this. So I think I'll put my ribbon, oh, maybe right there would be a good spot. So that's going to be the back or the front? Yeah, it's going to be the side. The side. The okay. side, yeah. I mean, it's up to you. You can have all your flowers or ribbons wherever you want them. Put that here, like that. And then I just start adding the flowers. And the more random you make it, I think the better it looks if you get it too, too regular. And it doesn't have that flow that natural flowers would have. You just keep adding until you get the look that you want. And we've added all kinds of flowers and you can see the leaves and the ribbon and it's just random. I decided not to put it all the way around. That's totally up to you. You've got the, the as many flowers as you need to finish this up. But somehow I kind of liked it on her. I like how with you on did the it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just the, the offset, mm -hmm. yeah. And you can see it's not in any regular pattern whatsoever. And it it's, shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. That's how, not how nature grows it anyway. No. So, okay. So that is the end. We have managed to get through the entire costume. Um, and I hope you learned a lot. I hope you'll have fun doing it. I'm pretty sure you will. It's, it's a really fun a little bit different costume, and I bet you don't have anything like it in your wardrobe for your doll. So um, have a lovely croquet game and croquet on the lawn with your girls, and we'll see you again sometime. Thank you, Cheryl, so much. It was a, a real pleasure having you here. Oh, you're bye more bye than welcome. Bye-bye, doll friends. Yep, bye-bye. <laughs>